All right, it's time. Enough. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day whether you're watching this show on youtube wherever you're downloading your podcast always remember this show is free and please never forget how much i appreciate your support I, look if, if no one else wants to take on the leadership role lay down the law then i'll do it i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna use my executive orders that's it i'm shutting down the spring transfer portal just like that a few keystrokes on the computer poof locked it's done gone this is what happens when you let children run the company. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Kids not only need discipline, they want it to. I don't know. You, you might have heard by now that um, Jason Zandamella has jumped into the transfer portal for USC. Well, he intends to once it's officially open April 16th. Uh, we're still a few days away from that. So I guess it's... Kids, young adults, they need discipline. And they might push back at first, you know, against the system, so to speak. But when you're developing somebody, a young person, young adult, kid, and you're teaching them that commitment and decisions matter, you're actually putting that young person on the right course in life. They have to understand decisions matter. That you know, they have to understand that there are consequences when you make certain choices. Where am I going with this? All right. Why allow recruits to enroll early at a school? Why would you want to enroll early at a school? Go through three-fourths of your spring camp and then use the spring transfer portal before you even play in the spring game. And there's no consequences. Like I said, by now, you've heard. I've said it at the top. Jason Zandamella, USC's highest-rated offensive line recruit in their class of 2024, is going to enter the transfer portal. The reason? He's homesick. And apparently, he's been feeling this way for some time. Now, let me, uh, let me give you some background. Originally, he's from Africa. He's from Mozambique. He moved to Florida to go to high school. He was living with a host family, okay? So he was going to high school in Clearwater, Florida, I believe, right? Wherever, he was in Florida. I apologize if I don't have the, the right city. Get over it. Um, he, But again, he committed to USC. He never wavered. He, you know, this whole time, his mom and his dad are back home across the ocean in Africa. Now, this is where things start to get a little unique for for Jason. Uh, he lost his mom. She passed away last year. It was, I believe October, sometime late last year. So uh, you know, I get it. You know, he wears that weight probably really, really heavy on his shoulders. He misses his mom. I get that. His dad is still alive. I believe he's still uh, in Mozambique. Yet, you know, Jason, you know, he still came to USC early. Again, I have to reemphasize, he, he's he been through three weeks out of four weeks of spring camp. He's been at USC for what, three months now, three and a half months? And then all of a sudden, you know, the homesick bug hit him hard. And, and he's not the first. He won't be the last. Homesickness happens even for guys who aren't, you know, thousands of miles away. They might just be hundreds of miles away. You know, a couple of Trojans who, you know, fought through it, Mike Williams. Dwayne Jarrett, they found a way. I was talking with a source before the show and um, who said that Jason's high school coach has been telling him, stay, just stay at USC. You'll be fine. Trust me on this. It'll pass and you'll be glad you stuck it out. And he told Jason this more than once. It's been an ongoing struggle, apparently. So for those of you who might not like my opinion on this matter, Thinking, oh yeah, take it easy. He's just a kid. All right, let's uh, let's let's get someone's opinion who has some skin in the game. Let's uh, let's 
let's listen to a former Trojan player, Dion Bailey. You know, the context that of his comment was, you know, fans begging Jason to transfer to their school since he's made it known that he's going to be leaving USC. So Gian, Dion jumped in to the uh, conversation. Quote, you want a kid who left another school after only competing in the spring? Imagine if he quit on your team during the season. I don't comment on the transferring anymore, but after spring, not a good look. End of the quote. So now you have Jason's high school coach, you have a former Trojan player, and me, all saying the same thing. Maybe saying it a little bit differently, but we're all saying the same thing. Speaking of begging, you know, Coach Riley, um, he had one hell of a quote after Thursday's practice. <laughs> on the topic of, um, it was on the topic of trying to coach during the transfer, transfer portal era. This is what he said. I mean. This is USC. You're not going to beg people to be here. For every guy that leaves here, there's going to be a line of 100 people that would die to take that spot in a heartbeat, end quote. He is right, 100% right. For every 100 people, he's 1% right. <laughs> Look, US, and I know this is going to come off a little hypocritical, but I'll, I'll close it off with this. USC is going to snatch, uh, they're going to grab, a few guys out of the transfer portal this spring when it opens. And because they kind of have to. But that again, that does not change my opinion. Um, it doesn't change my opinion that we need to shut this down. The spring transfer portal does not help anybody. Lock it up. Throw away the key. Pretend it never happened. And don't give me the the coaches, you know, leave all the time, clap back. And let me tell you why that, that excuse doesn't work anymore. Head coaches aren't leaving their programs during the middle of spring camp to go to another school. You know, they might leave to go to the NFL. So in those rare cases, when a coach does pick up and leave, there are some severe financial penalties somebody's paying. Look, these, the way these young adults, these kids, the way they they just move around with impunity right now. There's no regard for anyone but themselves. When I say that, they're not thinking about teammates anymore. They're not thinking about what it means to be committed, to work through adversity. <laughs> By the way, uh, I think my not so subtle uh, clue about Bear Alexander and uh, his. I'm using finger quotes. Lendale White approach to practice got some verification. Uh, after Bayer had his meeting with Lincoln Riley and Eric Henderson, uh, things were fixed and Bayer was suited up, ready to practice like uh, he was with the rest of his teammates on Thursday. So tell me you're holding out without telling me you were holding out. Now, I'm not saying that was Bayer's idea. I'm just saying just, it was kind of funny the way. Uh, Coach Riley, he kind of poo-pooed Bear's situation uh, like he was Vinnie Barbarino. If you're old enough to remember, welcome back, Hotter. Vinnie Barbarino, John Travolta's role. What? What? I don't know. What are you talking about? Um, he was asked about the conversations, uh, how how the conversations went with Bear this week. And uh, Lincoln Riley was like, like any other week, conversations haven't changed. If you see his body language, you can see he was trying to play naive. It was cute. He was protecting his guys. You got to respect him for that. I respect him for that. He answered the question the way a head coach should. He's not going to put his players out there. <clears throat> he said, if anything, um, Bear's frustration has been with uh, his health and not being able to go 100%. So apparently it's a miracle. He's healed. He's ready to practice on Thursday. <laughs> on an unrelated matter, but it is NIL related. Uh, these young adults, I just want to throw this in here before we close out this segment. They're starting to really tick me off. Well, not me. Let me rephrase that. They're starting to, and I, they're, they're ticking me off, but I don't have any financial investment in this. So who they're really ticking off are the guys who are supplying them with those free rides. 
who are paying for those free rides that they drive around in. When someone decides to jump into the transfer portal after driving around in a car for you know, three to six months, and I'm not talking about Jason Zanda Mela. I want to get that, I want to make that perfectly clear. But this was brought to my attention. Uh, that lease that those players get to drive around in, it's prepaid for all at once in advance. So when that car gets turned in early, that's thousands of dollars down the drain, money wasted. So when you're asking, you know, people to step up and invest in NIL, look, don't take advantage of it. I hate repeating myself. Um, and as many times as I have recently, these kids, finger quote, these young adults, these recruits, they're going to kill the golden goose. Don't take advantage of this too long. Don't look, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You're getting something right now. Like I said, you wanted to get paid, you're getting paid. Don't take advantage of this because that money's going to walk away. And all of a sudden you're going to say, where did it go? Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Turning down the volume because everyone's shouting at you? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. So following Thursday's practice, Coach Riley spoke with the media, and he was not holding back. We're going to talk about the defensive line in this segment, but uh, it... He, he got it started, and it, it, he was talking about the defensive line, but um, he, he was, uh, he, yeah, he was holding nothing back. Pretty candid with his, with his words. So maybe some of it was to reassure the fan base and himself that everything's going to be all right, but I think most of what he said was actually based on reality, and he was just speaking the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. So coach kind of had that, I don't give two ships, not, you know, I said with a P like Paul attitude when he said, um, quote, Jason wasn't a factor to play this year for us, a good young player, but it's a long ways away from being ready to help us. Jonah and Killian are just way ahead. In fact, he said just way, way ahead. So there it is. That's the harsh reality. Who knows? Maybe Jason, uh, and we're talking about Jason Zandamela, maybe he thought he uh, should be ahead of a preferred walk-on like Killian O'Connor. Uh, maybe not. I, I know that Killswitch, that's his nickname, um, has been busting his ass. And he's, he's, and let's not forget, he's also older. And he looks like a center. He's got that, that frame, that body style. Look, whether... Jason didn't give it enough time to feel comfortable due to his unique background situation or if it had to do with the depth chart. Uh, Coach Riley's feelings are clear. Look, in the first segment, I told you what he said about the, the transfer era. I mean, this is USC. You're not going to beg people to be here. For every guy that leaves, there's going to be a line of 100 people that would die to take that spot in a heartbeat. 
end quote. So when Coach Riley was asked about where Bayer needs to improve, uh, he was also very candid. Like all these guys, he's learning a new system and obviously playing the position differently than he, than we did a year ago. So he's going to have to adapt and learn like all the other defensive linemen are. And then I think individually, it's a battle of consistency. There's flashes of being a really good player, but with the great ones, it's less flash and more consistency. And he certainly has that ability. The other area we've challenged him to grow is to continue from the leadership side. He's got a great heart. He's really more invested in this team than at any point last year. He doesn't want to be a really good player. He wants to leave a mark on this place. End the quote. All right. The first part, playing the position differently. Remember when I told you one of the during one of the practice reports about how uh, Coach Josh Henson said the defensive line guys are playing through the offensive linemen, putting their hands on them, playing through them? Well, there you go. More physical, making the making them better. That's what Coach Riley was talking about right there. So all the guys are trying to get that that Grinch system taste out of their mouths, so to speak. Individually. Consistency, though, comes from practice. And I also love that last part of it. That last part of the quote, oh, great. That he wants to leave a mark on USC. All right. No more talk. Walk the walk. Let's find out. Sean Nua, Coach Sean Nua, he dropped a couple of nice little nuggets. Uh, he talked to the media after practice. When he was asked about where Anthony Lucas fits in, okay, number one, Lucas is playing with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, he Apparently, he, he's here on the outside chatter. He's not happy with the way he played last year as a sophomore. So he's still a young guy, and he's ready to bring it, according to Coach Sean Nua. A uh, second thing that Coach said about him, uh, that he can play either inside or outside. And he, he brought that up because he was asked, who's the most you know versatile guy in your defensive line room? And he brought up Anthony Lucas's name. He said, so whether if we're lining up four fast guys or four big guys, each one of them has to know the scheme. So obviously they see a lot of potential and a lot of versatility with Anthony Lucas. Enough so that Sean Nua wanted to get that out there. He closed the uh, his time with a media scrum with the following. Love this quote. We're going through people. We're going through them, through their heart, and try to get into the backfield through them. We also do stuff when we go around them. End the quote. So right there, that part where anytime you're talking about going through somebody's heart, you got my attention. That's why I like when Vic, uh, Coach Vic Sooto was USC's defensive line coach. He talked about playing with violent hands. It's, there's certain things that you want from your defensive line coach. There's certain language that they use. I love the language defensive line coaches use. They could talk like that to me all day long. <laughs> uh, let's stay uh, with. Let's just stay on the same defensive line tangent. And what the future could hold. You're going to love this. Uh, the name is Joachim Stewart. He is considered the number one player in the class of 2026. He's a defensive line guy, can't miss. I've mentioned his name before. He's from New Orleans. So was Eric Henderson, USC's defensive line coach. Well, guess who announced that he's coming to USC spring game? Uh-huh. Yakim Stewart. He just recently made that known that uh, he's going to be out there April 20th. And I think I mentioned this rumor uh, floating around out there that he's uh, he's going to reclassify for the class of 2025. He's entertaining the idea. And he's doing that because he's good enough to play college football in 2025. My, uh, my partner over there at WeRSC.com, guy I work with, Scott Trader, recruiting guru, said he heard an interesting comment about uh, Mr. Stewart today. Whoa. He needs to move on from high school, end quote. That's what this person said. 
I'm hearing it's going to happen. So, does the winner of the USC versus LSU game get his commitment? I've got my money on Coach Henny and his relationship building. And because I've got my money on Coach Henny, I've also got all of House of Victory's money backing me up. <laughs> if Coach Henny gets his wish, where he doesn't have one of the best defensive line classes ever at USC, um, in his words, he wants the greatest defensive line class in the history of defensive line classes. If he gets his wish, it's going to be an expensive defensive line class. House of Victory, start collecting. Because we're talking Justice Terry. We're talking Isaiah Gibson. We're talking Trajan Odom. We're talking Joaquin Stewart. If you want them all, it's going to be expensive. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> House of Victory. Let's get to work. Oh, one more thing. As much as I want the spring portal to shut down, again, I... After the spring, it's there. You got to use it, right? After the spring, get rid of it. Um, you're going to like this, though, USC fans. You're going to like who's coming. Defensive line, baby. That's all I'm going to say. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the views from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show you your total upfront, and that way you're going to you're going to know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. You can buy your tickets in seconds. It's that fast. Trojan fans, I just talked about it. Do you have your tickets to the uh, game for Vegas? All right. Well, Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Friday rant. It's here. Are you ready? Group chats. I hate them. I'm sure you've all been in a few of them yourself. There is one. I have this group chat for uh, Locked On College, for the Locked On College host, part of the Locked On Network. And a few of them abuse the hell out of it, I got to tell you. Even when you politely ask them, with you know not so subtle hint, to get a room and finish their conversation so my phone isn't chirping every 30 seconds. And again, while I love college hoops, season's over. I could not give two rips about UConn and Kentucky arguing about Dan Hurley and who will coach where. <laughs> I get it. It's big news. <laughs> Look, they're a necessary evil in today's workplace. They just are, these group chats. But my idea of, text, of a text message is send a quick message or two. But it's not to have some running discussion. You know, a bunch of guys, a couple of guys saying, neener, neener, neener. We're going to get it. No, you're not. Yes, we are. No, you're not. And yes, I could turn my notifications off. But then you know what? If I do that, I have to go back and I have to scroll through hundreds of messages to find a message from someone that might be completely unrelated to that. So. And it's not just that. I also hate my non-work group texts. They're just as bad. <clears throat> but at least with those, my friends, I can go, you know, I can get into that get off my lawn mode. But I'm not mad. It's just one of my pet peeves. In fact, 
when Kentucky <laughs> announced Mark Pope as their new head coach. Um, it, that happened later in the day. My phone started going off again. I was like, oh, great. This time, at least the last text in that group was a, sorry for blowing up your phone again, Mark. <laughs> LOL. It is what it is. It's just one of my rants. Nobody take this personally. Just getting it off my chest. It's Friday. Something else we got to talk about before we get out of here for this uh, for this week. O.J. Simpson, dead at the age of seventy six. Uh, I'm old enough to remember watching him play in the NFL, and that was at the end of his career. Um, but I look, I remember those Hertz commercials. Monday Night Football, Love Boat cameos, movies that he was, I mean, O.J. Simpson, before Michael Jordan, it was O.J. Simpson. He was the guy. But man, whew, behind the camera, when the camera was off, it was a bad dude with some bad demons. The most I can say is what he did on the football field was unreal. 2,000 yards in 14 games. Crazy. Heisen winner at USC. And after that, not someone you want to talk about at the dinner table. I offer my condolences to his kids, who's, you know, to any living family. Hopefully they can uh, move on now. You obviously have a little bit of empathy and sympathy in your in your heart for for Nicole Brown and, and for Ron Goldman and their and their families. But as far as that, I know USC released a statement. Lincoln Riley was asked the question after practice. Awkward moment. You got to ask the question. You got to get it out there. Get it out of the way. But that chapter is hopefully closed. Close the book. Throw it away. Bury it. It's over with now, right? All right. You know what else is over? This episode of Locked on USC. And another week of Locked on USC. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, become a subscriber. Smash that thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell notification button. And I'll be back next week with another five episodes. And we're we're, uh, we're into the preview week of the spring huddle. So a lot to talk about. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.